Uh, this is a Tombs of the Blind Dead-ish costume. Uh, it consists of a, rope, a hood and tabard. It consists of a cape, uh, the kind that cross tied in the back, uh, and a under robe and a belt. Uh, and we're going to distress all of these elements today in order to make it into a more cohesive costume. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tatter our edges. So we've got sleeve hems and the bottom. The, the way that I, I like to tatter it is kind of, what, if you've ever had bangs, it's kind of how you cut your bangs. <laughs> you cut straight up into it, so you don't want to smooth the line. Audience is 78% male. What you don't want is too even. You don't want a, a ring of fringe that is identical, so we're going to cut into this. And we're not going to cut a ton. This is where Phil's arm ends, so you think hand here. But these are actually going to come a little bit longer than usual because uh, they're going to have a skeleton hand sticking out. So we're just going to to make it look like this thing has uh, crawled out of tomb. On longer bits, we'll go through and edge so it's not just stuck with straight, right? It's easier to see on the back. I'm also going to cut some small slits in this, fold it in half, sandwich a little bit in between, slice it off. It leaves you with a an organic looking slice. You're a little bit upside down. So this is the bottom edge of the cape, the over cape. And I'm kind of working it a foot or so at a time from the bottom and I'm working a foot up. This will be the hardest stuff to get when it's back on the dummy. Uh, and we'll do some distressing back on the dummy that blends it all together. Uh, I'm using a, it's kind of a heat gun, but it's more precise. It is a plastic welding tool and it's got a real fine tip on it. It gets very hot, very hot air. I don't know if you guys can even see what it's doing to the fabric. I don't want to mangle the bottom edge. If I leave it too long, then it will make a hole. And I do want some holes in the bottom of it. Too much heat can shrink something up, but the effect that heat has on the garment is beautiful. Always test your heat on the fabric somewhere to see if it's susceptible to heat distressing. As long as you don't do big chunks, your fabric is going to stay nice and flexible. Uh, you, can, you can burn it and get it a little too crunchy, but I like that variance in texture where you can see the veins I kind of put in there. Um, and be careful about the bottom edge, especially on ladies' clothing, because if they're wearing something like heels or um, if they can get caught up in this ripped up, I'm staying off of the very edge of the hem uh, just because I want to keep the structural integrity of the garment intact. The whole time I'm doing this, I'm going to be very careful that I'm doing it fairly even. I don't want one area super crazy more than the other. That is a lovely, in my opinion, mothy, distressed look. As I'm doing this work here, I'm, I'm keeping in mind the kind of trails you might see in wood from bugs and insect uh, work. So. There you go. That's going to happen all over this guy. Uh, mostly along the bottom, and then I'll do a little more when it's back up on the figure. Stacy is giving the same process to the rest of the robe. Uh, she's gone all around the bottom, and she's done the sleeves. I don't like distressing too much around the collar as far as cuts go, because that gets uncomfortable for the actor. And I'm leaving this back a little longer. Then I have the front, so it's less of a trip, you know, like less of a trip hazard. Cut the front down a little bit more.
next step we're going to take here is uh, soldering iron. Uh, now, you've already seen him use the, uh, the heat, targeted heat gun. The next step is going to be soldering iron. This is actually a little more fine-tuned. Um, these are easy to replicate things like moth holes. This is uh, going to do a much smaller tip. I'm folding this over a couple of times both so you can burn through multiple layers of fabric and so you're less likely to hit your hand. You see how that made us a nice little burn hole there through a couple of different layers. They're nice to do in clusters. You have a nice little moth hole there. Now when you fold this over multiple times you can do quite a few of them at once. So let's. You can also drag into a line. It's basically cutting through the fabric. Gives you a nice little like wormhole. And we don't want to go too crazy with this. The idea is you're looking for organic. Something that looks like this happened because this was a body buried in a tomb. All right, so you can see how that's kind of lending it a, a tattered, moth-eaten look. Because this is basically plastic, uh, it will melt together, so when you fold it, just make sure you pull it apart pretty quick, otherwise it becomes more difficult to free itself. We're not distressing here, really, here, because this is all gonna be covered. He's gonna have his hood and tabard here. So there's no point in, in distressing. This is not gonna be seen. He's gonna be crossed into his belt here. So really- We'll distress the paint. Oh, we're distressing the paint. And we're not, we're not gonna cut holes or burn holes into this part. You're still distressing this part, just not like this. Next, we're gonna do a little bit of the same thing on the hood. So the next thing we're going to do is, now that we've got our uh, burn in aiding all done, show you guys a little bit of that. See that looks pretty nice. Uh, is we're going to turn them inside out and start uh, painting. So the first paint we're going to distress with flat black spray paint. I'm using really light short bursts a pretty good distance away because we want it to be pretty flexible and movable so you don't want a super heavy coat of paint. Also, in case anyone's worried, we have two big old air scrubbers up there keeping our air better. better. I'm gonna make some distressing juice because this air, this uh, costume has some heavy patches. Uh, I'm gonna mix up some silicone caulking. I'm gonna thin it down a little bit uh, and add some color to it because we'll use this to put moss on and just as to add a layer of texture, almost like a gesso would on canvas. I want that nice gray green color that's going to be different enough from the fabric but not uh, not be jarring and while this is a like a golden brown color it's not a warm color so I'm making sure that I don't change the tone I don't want cool distressing I don't want warm distressing on a cool garment uh, I kind I want this to kind of it has a very cohesive feel and I want to maintain that. Spray painted on our interior, so let's flip him back around. You can see how that's just we're not darkening it too much, just taking away some of that shine. Not all of it, but some of it. We 
way less shiny than it was before. And I'm gonna hit the bottom with a little bit of, just a wafer thin bit of black. Just to darken that hem up a bit. Really becomes apparent when you put the undistressed cape over it, how much shinier that guy is. Uh, yeah, same song, second verse, pretty much. Uh, I do want to throw a little bit of greens and grays on after the gray flannel up here is wonderful. Okay. And the holiday green, they're both design master. Okay. On the cape, we're also going to use some holiday green and some gray flannel. These are design master spray paints. Uh, they are traditionally for silk flowers but uh, they go on real nice and thin. They get... It's kind of a dusty gray, and I really like that effect that it gives of, of kind of a, a long settled dust. Tomb dust. Tomb dust. <laughs> We have the costume set up to this level. It is aged down. It is vastly different than it was before. Um, and we're going to put those final couple layers of things on it. Uh, those include cobwebs and moss and general gook. It's hour 27 and we're down to finishing touches. No, it's been like two hours tops. This is my silicone caulking. Uh, oil paint, odorless mineral spirits, and polyfiber mixture. And I have some oil leather dye, oil based leather dye in there for good measure. And this is going to go on and it's going to change the tone. And I'm going to use like the brush to get some stiff peaks in this. And after that last adding of color, I didn't mix it very well. So I have a little bit of the tan, I have a little bit of the green showing. I'm not smearing this all over. I'm not putting any on this under robe. Would you start distressing the belt? Yeah. Sitting right there. Uh, I'm not putting any on the under robe because the things that are be laundered the least the actor's going to have an inner layer right next to their body that they own and they take home and wash. And then this layer is going to be on and this layer uh, we will wash. And then these layers we will probably wash once a weekend, not every night, because this is out and it's got two layers of protection from their body, so this won't be as sweaty and gunky. a little bit of moss flocking that I'm going to use to, I'm going to use this silicone to hold this moss on. And this will be the most potent green on the costume, but it'll be these little controlled spots. Uh, this is going to be something that we'll have to redo uh, probably after a washing, but you know, it looks nice, it's an extra detail. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of the gook and a little bit of moss up on top of the head, on the hood, which I left alone. Now it's time for cobwebs. Weldwood contact cement in a spray can. It has a webby effect. just looks laid on that's going to stick as we move.
So this mask was made for this costume in a different video, um, and this is actually foam. It's uh, spray foam. An actor would, of course, wear a, a head sock before putting on this, but you don't necessarily want that right up against your skin. Here we have a Tombs of the Blind Dead costume. This is the same cobweb technique and material on the face. This looks like fresh. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, they thin out a bit, but they turn into like plastic strands. A nod to Tombs of the Blind Dead. Go make stuff! Time for cobwebs. I lost my cobweb. Oh, there they are. <laughs>